Right, so how I made my first epoxy river table. Um, so I was really, really stoked uh, to, to finally be able to pull this off and um, really happy with how the table turned out. So stick around and see, um, see what I learned along the way and uh, how we made this happen. So uh, here we go. Well, you gotta start off uh, with a great piece of wood, a great slab, uh, you want some character, live edge, uh, and this one had that, right? We got some sapwood contrast, a lot of figuring, um, so it's a great piece to start with. Um, but now I'm making the form, making the form for uh, the epoxy pour, um, using some MDF here and just getting it to size and pretty straightforward. And um, then take a look at it and see, okay, this is what we got going on. All right, um, sheathing tape. So you absolutely need to make sure you don't have any leaks in your form. Uh, so I'm using tuck tape. Uh, there's plenty of other brands, um, but you know, get that sheathing tape on there and then uh, attach the form. So I actually started with some brad nails and then uh, followed up with some screws. Just make sure it's secure. Again, you do not want any leaks. Uh, and so make sure you add some silicone. Um, so this definitely uh, had zero leaks. The silicone worked great. Um, all right, back to the slab. So make sure you clean up that slab really well. Uh, you don't wanna have any like little particles or sawdust that ends up floating into your epoxy. Um, so get that nice and clean uh, and just exactly how you want it to look. Um, here I added some silicone on the bottom just to hold it in place, but also to prevent uh, you know any leakage on the, uh, on the underside. And uh, that worked really well. I mean, it had a little leakage, but that's bound to happen. Um, but some silicone on the ends and um, just to you know, not waste too much epoxy. Of course, we gotta get it flat. So here I am trying to get it all flat. Unfortunately, it was not as flat as I thought. However, that turned out to be a happy little accident, which we'll get to later. Um, and then clamping it down. So clamp it down, you don't want, want it to float. It does have this silicone underneath, but still clamp it down. All right, I'm um, just cleaning it up, you know, cleaning out any of those last divots before we got going. All right, epoxy time. So I went with um, some eco epoxy. It was actually the cheapest. Uh, worked great, um, and um, yeah, lots of pigments. So some black diamond pigments, uh, went with some blue. Uh, main color was Liberty Copper. Good stuff, it's gorgeous. Um, do some test pieces just to kind of decide your uh, level of transparency and whatnot. Um, I let it sit and pop some of the bubbles beforehand, but you're of course gonna have to do this after you pour. Um, bubbles are just bound to happen with epoxy. Dental syringes, people. Dental syringes for epoxy. It gets it right where you want. They're cheap, it's so worth it. Get some dental syringes, uh, especially for all these little bug holes and little knots. And now the pour. Time to be quiet, enjoy. Yeah, that's pretty satisfying. Um, happy to say we had no leaks, uh, worked great. Um, so once you pour, you're gonna have to, you know, do the whole air bubble thing. Uh, you know, use a torch, use a heat gun, something like that to, to pop all those air bubbles, which will continually get released, uh, especially in that first 24 hours. Um, and then you can add in your swirl patterns, but just know, I mean, you're gonna have to keep reapplying that swirl pattern and kind of like, you know, hours 24 to 40. Um, it's kind of like that last window, but it's not gonna look like this always. It, it will change, so just be aware of that. Uh, here you can see there's actually the caulking around there uh, just to prevent, um, you know, too much leakage. Um, all right, so this part, um, I ended up doing a second pour uh, because it was not as flat the table that was as, as I had hoped. So here you can see, oh, it's, it's not, you know, that deep there and it's a little deeper on that end. So um, ended up doing another pour just because I wanted to maintain uh, the full thickness of the slab. And this is how I got that two-tone thing uh, when I got it all flattened and really, really happy this happened uh, because it looks really cool uh, in the end. So if you're trying to pull off that look, um, make your table not flat. I think I might even try that in the future. All right, so pulling it out, um, you know, and you know, it, it comes apart pretty easily because uh, that sheathing tape, it works great. The epoxy doesn't stick to it. It's kind of satisfying uh, at this moment. And you can see uh, a little bit of a leak. Um, and then peeling off all that caulking. So I, I would definitely do silicone or find something that peels off easily, um, but cleaned it up pretty pretty easily. So this here is a router sled. So um, you gotta flatten your table somehow. And um, you know, this one wasn't super wide, it was 20 inches, but that's too big for my planer. So how to make a, a bigger router sled. 
Um, there's plenty of videos online. I got some more content over on my Instagram uh, about different router sleds I've made, but um, it's a great jig. I love making jigs. Um, it's fun to make your own and, and it works, right? So get jiggy with it. Um, I definitely added a couple pocket holes, you know, just, just a few screws, you know, just a few. Um, but so I did the router sled. Router sled worked great. Um, it definitely got it flat. Uh, the thing with this is, you know, if you have a higher quality bit, you know, some of those bits run like 150, 200 bucks, you're gonna get a much better finish. My bit was 25 bucks, so, you know, the finish was what it was. So, um, just, you know, I had a little bit of chip out. Okay, I actually had a lot of chip out. I got it flat, which is what I needed, uh, but because, you know, I had so much chip out on the epoxy itself, I decided that I wanted to clean that up. So, um, I ended up pulling out the power planer, uh, just to kind of smooth it out a little bit uh, after lots and lots of router time. So here it is, just a power planer, just to kind of remove some of the marks and try and get that uniform thickness. I mean, if, if you want to be all hand tool, you could totally do that, but it's worked great for me. Um, but as you know, you, you go down layers and you reveal stuff, especially if you got wood with character, uh, or if there's any of those bug holes, it's going to reveal some, some more of those. So throughout the process, I, I constantly had to, you know, refill little holes. So here using a Duresta ice pick, um, to kind of clean out, you know, any of that sawdust left over from bugs and whatnot. And again, the dental syringe. Um, so just filling in all those holes with that really cool blue, that cool offset color. And there you can really see that pattern of the, the copper epoxy in the middle. So here, this is just clear epoxy. So I ended up going uh, back where there was some of the chip out left over. And I, I wanted to make sure I had a perfectly flat finish that, you know, when I was sanding, I wasn't going to have any of those you know, weird divots with, uh, you know, epoxy sawdust and whatnot. So this worked really great for me. I just went with some uh, uh, Total Boat 2 to 1. Uh, it, you know, cured in a day. And um, and then it was time to sand. So um, I, I used 80 grit on the sides. Like, I tried to not uh, hit the epoxy with 80 grit at all. I didn't want to leave uh, any marks. Um, and so did 80 for all the wood and kind of, you know, up, up to the line. And then I worked up through the progression. So I actually went 100, 120, 150, 180, uh, 220, 240, 320. And um, don't, stop, don't stop the progressions. Um, I saw a couple of videos, a couple other people uh, really recommend that and I'd agree. So um, the other thing is, you know, as you're, you know, sandpaper gets bogged down with epoxy dust, clean it off. Otherwise you're gonna leave some swirl marks, so. Um, yeah, I just went to 320 and this is crazy smooth. The epoxy looks incredible. I mean, some people go up to, you know, 15,000 or whatever, uh, but 320 was great for me. And then I did Osmo. I had been wanting to try this forever and that's what a lot of people use for these river tables. And man, this stuff is the real deal. Not sponsored, but believe the hype. Uh, believe the hype, this stuff is incredible. So um, I went with the, uh, you know, Scotch-Brite, you know, light scouring pad. So it's a non-abrasive pad uh, just to kind of buff it in and um, just kind of cleans up the surface while you're doing it. Um, there's plenty of ways to apply it. You can use, you know, a blue shop cloth. You can do, you know, one of those card spreaders. You can use a credit card. Um, but you just want to get it in, uh, get it into the surface really well. And then uh, what's most important is to come back afterwards uh, with another scotch right pad or you know another shop towel and kind of clean it up um, Dry it off. You don't want to leave any on the surface, but the most important part is buff it in so um, This is just a Ryobi, you know little little palm buffer works great 30 bucks Home Depot I use this all the time uh, But after one coat the finish was incredible. I ended up doing three coats and definitely worth it. I love this stuff um, so now the base, this is an awesome solid base that uh, found online and uh, works great. Um, so uh, putting in the holes, threaded insert. So definitely don't attach the base straight to the wood. Um, so adding some threaded inserts here, getting that depth just right. This was a little nerve wracking for me. Didn't want to go through the top because, you know, that would be bad. Um, and um, threaded inserts, pretty, pretty satisfying moment, obligatory, you know, slow-mo, slower, threaded insert. Oh, so great. Um, anyway, so threaded inserts in, add the screws, attach the top, it's secure, it's amazing. It doesn't just look like a cutting board anymore. Um, 
You know, it's an awesome custom table. So this is perfect for, you know, a custom space. And man, I am, I'm just thrilled with how it turned out. Um, you can really see, like, look at all the burl and the figure in there as I'm attaching the base, you know, to the top. Um, but I was, I was excited. I was really excited to, to be able to do this project and to pull it off and um, thrilled for my first river table, first epoxy project. Um, pretty happy with how it turned out and definitely really dig that design of the half transparent and half opaque. Uh, I want to try and replicate that again, but it's fun. It's beautiful. So all you makers out there, you haven't made one yet, make one. Make an epoxy table. It's pretty fun.